rise for the flag salute. Chief Cahill, please lead us. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Here. Commissioner Langria? Here. Mayor Holtzman? Here. Pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the law. Before we get started, can we have a moment of silence for the veterans? This past Monday was Veterans Day. People in the audience, just so you know why we're sitting down here and we're not up there, um, myself and, the, and my Commissioner Landgraf, Commissioner Creeble, this table is surrounded by our department heads and one meeting a month. Sometimes we skip depending on what's going on. We have all the department heads and they, actually, they present to us what's going on in their individual departments and it's part of our workshop. So after the department heads go through what they have to say about their individual departments, then we'll go into, then we'll go up there, we'll go into our workshop portion of the meeting where we, the commission, discuss what we're gonna vote on after the workshop. We then go right into a voting meeting. So just so you know, there are public portions. The first public comment portion is on the things that we will be voting on. So if, if you're here for something that has nothing to do with our agenda, you will be able to speak at the very end of the voting part of the, the regular meeting, just so you know. I talk fast, so we'll go fast. But just, I mean, I, for you, I'm not used to seeing people here, so I really don't know why we have people. I'm actually excited, but just so you know, this is our process, okay? So um, we do not have any presentations this week, and we do have department heads. So we'll start with Jim Pakanowski. Just say your name and your department because we do actually have people here tonight. Um, Jim Pekinowski, I'm the Network Administrator for the city. Um, uh, not, I'm going to try to keep it uh, short and sweet. The biggest things that we have that we're working on right now is we're still working on the door security um, project. Um, we did receive our final quote for all of the doors. Uh, the total of that was 75255 total dollars. Uh, once we reviewed it with Kathy, uh, she decided that we would need to go out to bid for it uh, since it was uh, too much. Um, based on, based on uh, going out to bid and the lead time, because uh, it's about 10 to 12 weeks to get the doors once we give them a purchase order, we're probably looking May to June before the door security project is, is finalized. Because um, I would guess that the bid wouldn't be, based on the commission meetings, wouldn't be able to go out until probably January. Uh, and then by the time it's awarded and everything. So we'd be looking at probably May to June. For the public, the security doors that Jim is speaking about are the doors within City Hall. It's a public building and most of the, it's just about, I think all the offices, uh, people could come in and just walk right into an office. And unfortunately with the world we live in, we feel that our staff need to be um, more secure. That's what he's talking about. So we would have a resolution that approves going up to bid. Right, on the agenda. Yeah, want to do that first. Yeah, Kathy's going to write up the bid specs, and then we'll do a resolu guess a resolution to go out to bid for it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, she, she said she should have that. Uh, Kathy's going to write the bid specs. Yeah. Uh, what she did is she took the quote that we had from the um, from the door vendor, and she's going to utilize that to write up, or write it up because that breaks it down exactly what we're looking for. Can you copy me on that? Yeah, once, we, once I get anything from her, I'll, I'll send it out to everybody yeah. and stuff. Uh, the next thing is our, um, our Office 365 um, email in the cloud uh, project. Uh, we received the final quote from Dell and Microsoft. Um, it's a three-year agreement uh, for a total of $13,495.86 per year uh, to take all of our email from an in-house system to a cloud-based system um, with Microsoft. 
Um, right now, um, the contract is being renew reviewed by uh, Tim McGuire uh, so that we can have an, um, have that finalized. Uh, once we have that, it should be about four to six weeks to get that entirely set up. Um, I'm sure, I'm not sure if Tim was going to speak on it or not, but, um, and I only have very basic, but we finished the final setup and training on the e-ticket program for the police department. Uh, it's in six, six of the vehicles. We have three tablets that are set up in order to do the e-ticketing. Today was the testing stage in which we would write a live um, ticket and then they would send it up, send it up to the AOC to verify it. And then once they send the approval, we would be able to go live with it. So that should be um, live within the next, um, assuming I didn't hear if we'd gotten the final approval uh, yet today, but that should be able to go within the next <coughs> block. Be more efficient if it, if it reduces the uh, chance for error. Double, no more double keying things in or writing them. No, no, no hand, no, nope. no handwritten, no handwritten. Uh, tickets. Everything is. Immediately thing, it immediately right. goes from the vehicle right to the, um, right to the, right to the court's office. Okay. So, so they don't have to cool. hand anything in. They don't. Uh, court doesn't now have to double entry. <coughs> so, right. uh, so it's all right there, all right there, ready to go. Especially <coughs> in the summertime when they're doing certain certain. Neighborhoods that are high density, they're going to be able to get to it quicker. So it's not going to be. Yeah, and, and but it's going to make, it's right. make it more efficient. It's enforcement. Yeah, where they might have to, uh, where it might take them five minutes to write four or five tickets, they can do that in less than a minute now, just right. by simply, you know, um, changing a few buttons here and there. Right. So it's going to be much more efficient, much, much easier uh, for everybody all the way around. Uh, and the, um, the last thing is I'm just working, starting to work on the uh, budget prep for next year. Uh, probably the two biggest things that I'll have in my budget is uh, a new upgraded phone system and c cameras uh, within uh, the city as a whole. Uh, this building, public works, library, uh, fishing pier, uh, you know, and a couple other areas that we have. Okay. Uh, Great. That's it. Great. The electronic locks have already been approved. They have to wait in line. Until wait until the doors, doors are done, yeah. Yeah, really, it doesn't make sense to try to put them in now no. when we're going to replace the doors, which are which are old and falling apart Just anyway. Um, but yeah, that'll all happen once once they do that. Great. Okay, good. You have somewhere to go? Uh, if I could, if you don't yeah. mind. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Right. And I didn't test my phone, but I will. Okay, yeah, let me know if I need to look at it anything tomorrow. Hey, Tim. Although we don't use we will have Bill, because it's your birthday, and after you speak on our uh, tax office, you may leave. Thank you. You're welcome. Happy birthday to me. My name is Bill Crowther. I'm the tax assessor here. Um, I just wanted to go over the uh, how Bentner's doing as a whole with the building. As you guys see, you drive through town all the time. The building is, is insane. It's really going crazy, and there's a lot of... Uh, sales going on which are selling for a little bit more because people are improving the properties and selling them our ratio um, went from in 2016 108.67 and this year we're at 95.38 which is good the closest to 100 the better we're at 92 93 last year so 95.38 is really good and our coefficient of deviation which is all the sales that come in for class ones which is vacant lots class two which is the basic houses and commercial properties. Our general COD went from, tw anything under 15 is really good. 2016 was at 20, almost 22. 17 was 17. Uh, last year was at 14 and this year we're at 12, which means that the sales are tighter. Me meaning the usable sales of sales that are arm's length sale between willing buyer and willing seller are a lot closer to what the assessed value is, which is really good, which keeps you much further away from having to do any kind of rebounds. Right. right. So you're, you're saying if you were to do like a scatter chart of this, it would be clo they're closer to what our revaluation two years ago had justified. Exactly. Right. And they're, they're just usable sales, meaning new houses don't qual they're not in that ratio, and uh, any kind of foreclosures aren't in that ratio. These are just houses as they were in 2016 selling today are selling very close to what we have the new assessed value at. Wonderful. Great. And that's all I have. That's it? Okay. Go enjoy your birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Jerry, Thomas? Yes. 
Jerry Thomas, uh, Recreation Department. Um, I'm going to talk about the uh, things that are starting for the fall uh, that we've advertised and classes are starting. Uh, we've, the classes for adults are in their second week, and the kids' classes are in their third week because they started on the Saturday, their Saturday morning classes. Um, we are starting to get busier now with the fall season that football is over. We're turning our, a lot more time into the school. So we'll have more basketball teams. We have tryouts this Saturday for third and fourth grade boys and girls, the little guys. And we do need some coaches for those. <laughs> we did uh, put a flyer out to the parents that we do need some coaches for, the, for that uh, age group. The bus trip is a little bit more than half full, and we have a month to go, so I'm sure that we'll fill the bus up the, uh, December 14th, the week after. New York City, yes, the sh so else does that. We know that. shopping trip. <laughs> Jerry, it's a good trip. It's a good trip. How much is that? Because we get a lot of people coming. That's in forty dollars. That's it's on the website, but I'll okay. check it. Yeah, forty dollars. Yeah. Okay. Forty, yes. Um, and we're coming up. Uh, we we have some stuff that we came through the rec board for pickleball and our, our favorite pickleball and tennis is that it's growing fast. There's a lot of people really uh, excited about it and they actually have their own board which reports to the rec board and they're looking to do tournaments and they want to do more and so we just felt as, as the rec board that we needed to kind of get a little more grip on the pricing of it and the management of it for tournaments because we don't think that the city or the rec board should be the ones running the tournaments all the time, Call, you know, that we're responsible for the t-shirts, we're responsible for trophies, that should, that onus should be on the ones running the tournament and they should be the ones there and they basically pay us a, a fee and the court fees. So that is coming up, I believe, in January once we straighten all the, the paperwork out for that. <coughs> Jerry, that was the summer of volleyball. Exactly. Exactly. It's because it, it just, we want it to grow, but we just, we can't manpower it and we can't run every, you know, no, thing in the city. Done that way for years. Yeah, it's been done that way and that's the way we do baseball tournaments. Teams, teams come in from out of town, they, they pay, they come to the rec board, they get approval, they show the insurance and, and we go from there and they're responsible. They, they have to have an on-site person that, you know, we stay in contact with, but they're, they're there. We're not there all the time. So that's what we're trying to get that to. Yeah. And the other thing that we're, we're, we're going to solve with that is the instructors. We're getting a lot of interest in instructors for tennis lessons and instructions for pickleball lessons. So we want it to be fair with everyone. So uh, again, this is, comes through the rec board as we sat down over the summer and with the uh, pickleball people that uh, we, we try to come up with some regulation for that, and that'll be coming up on a resolution. But that, that m was more to get, make sure that the person instructing is an official instructor and has either some background as a, as a coach, or maybe, a, you know, they played tennis pro or in college. And it, w again, the onus goes back on them that they would have to have insurance to cover them. And in, in order for us to better monitor it, and not is uh, be on top of them is that they would p pay a fee, an, an additional upfront fee, to do this, and then, then we could have three or four tennis, you know, people instructors, and they would pay the fee up front. So then we wouldn't have to watch how many people they sign up each week, how many people they did this day, what's our percentage of this. It, it was just too much, and I think it would be fairer to do it this way, and that's what the board felt. It would be you know, fair to everyone and get everybody a chance and then they would be able to be an instructor. So th that's two things that will be coming up. But the reason why that is I wanted to just get to a... We also carved out times for them to be... To be yes, to yes, the, the, there, is a, there is a certain time because our mornings is when everything is busy. So there will not be any lessons <coughs> given uh, from 8 o'clock in the morning till noon. All instructions will be from noon till late at night, and there's only a certain court you can use. So we'll keep the other courts free, and then we bought some stanchions to kind of uh, 
square off the corners so the balls don't be going all over the place. So, you know, we'll try to do it that way. But getting back to that and the reason why uh, pickleball and tennis, I'm just going to in, in, we'll go back to 2018, pickleball did uh, a total of 31.35. This past year, we, we did 11,775. Wow. So, so you, you could see the, the use that there is there. And, and what I really liked, and I think it's, you know, because of the way we, we operate as, as a unit here, everything doesn't just go. I mean, every, everybody knows what's going on. Tim knows what's going on. Marie knows what's going on. And it just doesn't happen that our, te our tennis did not drop. Even though we took away courts, wow. it, it didn't drop. So our tennis actually stayed the same, but we gained the pickleball. So it was, you know, a good move. So we went from between the two tennis and pickleball from last year, they brought in um, a little over 16,000 total, which is great. It was more than we were doing before. But this past year, we did 25 between the two of them. So it's, it's, it's very popular. So that was the reason why we, we had to try to get a better hold of what we're doing down there so we can have some more tournaments and do some more stuff and bring the numbers up and not lose anything. I think the other win is that that area in the summertime is totally engaged. Oh, yeah. The group has made it a real community, <coughs> you know, feeling there now. Yeah, the pickleball. Yeah. That was not uh, utilized practically at all, it felt like. Yeah. So, so that's, a, that's a big win. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to explain what was going on and how I wanted to tie that in, why we're doing these things, because we need to do these things. Um, I just want to give a shout out because last at the meeting Tuesday night, our, our Ventnor Pirate football team, our, our, our varsity team, actually got into the semifinals, which we haven't gotten into in years. We had our team win seven and three. And just two and three years ago, we were worried about even having a team because we were down to like 11, 13 kids on each level. And it was a little scary. You know, either kids not being able to practice or getting hurt, not having the numbers, you know, the concussion thing. So it was, it was great to see everything over there. And they were very appreciative of everything that was done for them. Um, they wanted to make sure that they, they thanked the city and especially the public works department because the work crew and the maintenance they, that they do on our field, people come to our field and love to play there. Um, I'm just, I'll just pass, this is uh, some of the work that the guys did for the weekend of the Halloween game. Yeah, I saw that. So you could see. Oh, I love it. That's so the guys, the guys really take, they really get involved with, with the Pirates and just any activities that we do over there. So again, we want to thank, make sure that pub Public Works did a great job with that. And... Um, Fisher, Joe Fisher, and Tom Manor. And Steve Basner helped them. Steve, Steve, Steve Basner yeah, helped them. So, yeah, they did a great so job. And they're always really helpful. The last, the last game that they played, if you remember, we had a, real, a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. And the back field behind there was flooded. And not only did Public Works, but we got uh, from the fire department to the police department, brought over the, the stanchions to block the puddles off so it didn't look like a mess, it, lo it, was, it was organized. Right. So they brought all the stanchions so people can walk clearly and not, you know, it was, it was yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, it was, it was re really well we work, done. We work as a city now, Jar. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's it. So everybody seems to, um, I have to say we all seem to get along well. We work together whenever we call a department for help, there's always help there. Um, in the future, we're looking at a few things and probably redoing the tennis courts this, this year, upgrading them, and putting new nets, bringing in the blue paint for them. And um, I think we are going to be replacing the volleyball lights on the courts outside because they're, they're, they need to be replaced. So I'm, Ed and I are working on that together. about it.
Great. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Great. Jerry. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Do you have somewhere to go or are you staying? No, I'm good. You're good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy? How was your change? Okay. Uh, no, I'm back. <laughs> 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 you only did it once. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You're done. No. When music starts, Jim Agnazino. I'm the construction official and zoning officer and uh, department head for all the code enforcement. Uh, from January till now, we have 37 new homes with about $13,500,000 in construction cost. And that's probably low because they feel it's going to affect their taxes, yeah. so they, they don't want to be 100% truthful like sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Where's Bill? Get Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Look at these houses. Eight more house raises were completed this year so far. They're, they're continuous. Uh, as you ride around, you still see them up in the air and four being raised. Uh, we had 357 sales so far this year, and I would say 75% of them are second homes. Some people appreciate that, some people don't, but it, we're, we're, we're turning definitely into a resort. I've been here for a while, and you see a big difference in, like I said, who's buying and what they're using these homes for. Uh, Violations as far as code enforcement, we sent out 2,100 notices for code enforcement, whether it's to have your house painted, lids on the trash cans, which are no longer a big issue, cut grass, what have you. So nobody gets picked on except for those 2,100. <laughs> so far to the to date, yes. Uh, we're working on, uh, with the commission now, we're meeting in the next week or two with a company that monitors the Airbnbs. We don't have, we can't get the addresses of these homes. We could get pictures of them off the internet, but we can't get the addresses. Somehow these third parties get the addresses. They register them, they monitor them, they have 24-7 hotline in case there's an issue. Uh, all in all, it was pretty quiet this summer with the Airbnbs. Uh, we had a few complaints, but it's usually just because you got people that are full-time residents and their neighborhood is turning into rentals, but it's legal. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. And like I said, we're uh, going to make sure that they're all registered and follow the regulations in town. Uh, PD, if they call my office or the, I ask police department to stop by some of these properties, they talk to them nicely and usually that's the end of the issue. That's all I have. On, on that Airbnb, if, if you follow uh, the national rules actually, uh, San Francisco is where Airbnb started and they actually are being proactive. They had some issues out in California recently so they are no longer going to rent for one night because that happens to be that's a part of New Year's Eve, you know, uh, Halloween, or different different nights. So they are in the next 12 months, they're going to not allow single night rentals of Airbnbs. Now, did they? I mean, so Airbnbs, it's a brand name. So these are short term rentals, is what the term means. The uh, other ones, you know, you've got uh, VRBO, they have not. I've seen follow suit, but at least Airbnb is the most recognizable. Um, and they're going to they're be more proactive because they're going to get sued. If, if you recall, we had an issue on New Year's Eve here. That was um, an issue, and that was an Airbnb. And it was a one-night rental. So that's, that's something that we're being proactive with. This company will come in, and it's not going to be cheap. It's going to be several thousand dollars to, to hire them each year to monitor and track these Airbnb locations. So we have more information on them. That make the, the property owners you know, pay the mercantile fee. Pay the mercantile fee that they're supposed to be paying in fees to stand up about their properties. So and I know the commission, noise, with the commission, they very heads up. Nobody's ignoring this by no means. And if any changes have to be made, I'm, I'm sure we'll make them. But right now, we don't want to chase nobody out of town. Right. Yeah, that's the other side of it. We want people to right. come into your community. Spend and, and spend time and money in our town, but there's there, there. If I remember, it was close to 250 in that 
neighborhood in Benton, which was a surprising number to me. Yeah, but and we only minimal. have like 80, I think, yeah. Yeah. that filed, yes. registered. Right. As we find those, they get fined. Yeah, but this company should, as they indicated to you, mostly um, in the produce yeah. revenue to cover their costs. Yes, we should pretty much break even and hire and that's third party. Sets a precedent that we're paying attention to, mm -hmm. but, but again, you don't want to, you don't want to be, you want to also incur tour. Yeah. Uh, also, I believe the movie theater they're shooting for January now, <laughs> and that Santucci's <laughs> also uh, sometime after the first of the year. They've been pretty busy over there. Yeah, I saw that. A lot of progress mm -hmm. they're making over there. Anything going on with Wawa? A lot of people have been seeing like lights on there late at night. And no, I, I looked in there a few times, and I don't see anything going on. And yeah. No, no construction. Yeah, they've been on. I think they're on time. Yeah. 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 And I, yeah. I get no calls on that place, surprisingly, because I get calls on everything, and I get nothing, no interest in that. Uh, I don't know whether they have it deed restricted. Yeah, they put, they put um, retail food restrictions on it. You can't do another community. I'm the cultural arts director. So um, we had a wonderful summer and having a, a good fall so far. We have classes for, with dance for kids and adults and visual arts classes for kids and adults. We have a new after school class uh, for kids uh, age six and older, which has been great and well attended and really having fun with that. With the um, reduction of arts education in schools, with, um, in Margate schools and in our schools sometimes, um, that's a need, so we're filling that need in the after school class and it seems to be really well received. Uh, we also have a holiday show coming up December 7th. We have 25 vendors, all local, all handmade work, <coughs> pottery, jewelry, mosaics, and all different kinds of art of uh, local artists. And that's, and with music, live music, and food, it's going to be really fun. So anybody wants to come December 7th. And uh, we have ongoing mosaic mural community art project that we uh, had a big workshop for and had the community come and work on that and that's going to go where the um, new playground is on the library side it's going to be on the wall uh, bordering that and it's going to be so it's about half done so we're doing really well that's all i have i'm just going to piggyback since you've mentioned the uh, christmas holiday show what, mm -hmm. what did you call it a holiday, craft show. holiday show on december 7th mm -hmm. you're 10 to 4 correct 10 to 4 so if people go there and shop, they can just walk up to Ventnor Avenue because that is when we are having our Twilight okay. Holiday Parade. Our coordinator is here in the audience. And this, because it is December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day, this year our Grand Marshals are veterans from the, divi the various divisions. Am I correct, Shelley? Yes, that's what I said. Branches and military. So they will be our Grand Marshals. and. Every year, the parade seems to get better and better, bigger and better. We, uh, we uh, Shelley also managed to get mummers, and we have yes, we have mummers and we have string bands, and she's got the flyer. So it's the same day as your show, which is great. So the city, there's park. something there's, right, there's something there going on stuff. from 10 in the morning until that evening. So that's great. It's, yeah. I like the, I like that it's on the same day, the, and the rain date for the parade is Sunday. The eighth. We'll yeah, but yeah. Well, <laughs> so. in charge of that. I just want Shelly's in charge. So I just wanted to bring that up since you mentioned it. A lot of people do that. They park on the New Haven or the Meters or that area. Yes, walk they walk exactly. Great. Yes. Okay. Great. And there's a bathroom. And there's a bathroom. Okay. Who's that? Lisa. Um. So our office continues to do daily 
day to day stuff, processing. Um, Tell them who you are. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. That's okay. I know you are. <laughs> I'm Lisa Hand. I'm the city clerk. <laughs> so we continue to um, prepare the packets for tonight's meeting, prepare resolutions, prepare any ordinances. Um, we process vital statistics. This year, we're up to 350 dog licenses, which is up from last year. I'm excited. Which is good. Um, we processed 155 mercantile licenses for 2019. We worked really hard this year to make sure that everybody is current. So that was a big project you know, with the help of Al. Um, so kudos to him. He did a great job. So um, that was good. Uh, I attended two continuing education classes in the month of October. And we worked with Trunk or Treat to help with that, which was a good success. And 2020 beach tags are hopeful to be on sale on Tuesday. We designed it this year, correct? We no. did not. No. Oh, I thought it was Marty our turn. No, Marty. Stu the kids designed it. Oh. I thought it was our turn. So you'll come to City Hall, my window, room five, and we hope, they did the yeah, just my window, and we hope to have them on sale on um, okay. Tuesday. Okay. 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 Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, the, and the holiday badges are how much, please? $12. Because they come in it. They have a nice gift box. Right. Yes. Okay. And they're really cute this year. Great. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So who, who do we have left? Yep. Al. Hi. Uh, I'm Al Stanley, uh, City CFO. Um, I've been working primarily on the budget. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for giving me their requests um, already. I appreciate that. I also did a sheets this year for capital requests, so that I have everything from the departments. Um, we arranged meetings with the commissioners to discuss budget and go over it for each, each one department at a time. So we can go over that. Um, I was working on looking also looking at the revenues. I'll know better after December 31st when the year closes, but construction fees are up and we're doing good well with the assessments. So I don't see any um, problems with the revenues this year so far. You know, you know, not wood. <laughs> and um, so I, 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 I hope everything works good uh, with that. Um, also, I was working on a project where I'm asking, requesting for uh, this piece of software that I'm going to use to it'll generate quotes. Um, it basically, you put in the spec of what you want, and it generates a quote for you. So like instead of us having to search for quotes and have to look around, we can, it'll do it throughout the country too, not just standardized. standardized. You put in the specs of what you want, it'll find out, it'll give you prices from the, you can do up to five quotes, you can do a hundred quotes. Kind of right. you know, yeah. so it'll give you a vendor? You mean? It'll give you a vendor, give yeah. you everything. It also has the ability, if you could look to see what all other entities throughout the state purchased. So, like, you can see, like, you know, what Margate paid for some certain items, and you right. can see where, what other vendors could do. Um, what departments would that include? Well, here's what I, what, if I choose if we, uh, choose to get the product, I get three licenses. Okay. It would be, and I, I would prefer the license to use the most would be Public Works and the Police Department, right. you know, but in the, and all the other departments, they could just say, I, I need this, and I could put it in. Exactly. He just wants to. He like. He just wants to fight fire. That red truck's not enough. <laughs> but I think it'll help us a lot, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, especially for even if we don't use the quotes, but with the threshold under six thousand dollars right now, but we can still do it just to get better prices. Because I know we use like CBW a lot for a lot of products because it's under state contract, but it seems to be that's the most expensive one. And I, I like to sometimes get around when you get better deals on things. And that's all I'm looking to do. And um, But other than that, that's primarily what I'm working on. It's, 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 as everybody knows, the budget's a monumental task. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm working on uh, primarily for everybody right now and payroll projects, but mostly really for that. That's great. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who did I miss? Ed? Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Ed Stinson, I am the superintendent of public works and the city engineer. I'm going to start with Ernie's report for tonight. Ernie had a 
uh, late night dealing with a water main break uh, last night. He was out all night. But it's all better, correct? All fixed, patched for now. Right. Um, but yes, taken care of. Um, on the agenda tonight for water and sewer, uh, resolution 365 awards a contract for fire hydrants. It's a 50000 that's, what, that's our water main. Which one is it? That was Mammoth and the Oh, no, that, oh. Oh, that's the break. That's the break. Yeah. yeah, resolution. I'm looking for fire hydrants now. Resolution 365. Okay. And that's for that's to uh, that's Waterworks the, Supply Company, right? To supply 20 fire hydrants uh, that, that supports the program we have with the fire department to replace fire hydrants throughout the island. Okay. Uh, that continues um, every year. Uh, our water usage for October was 33, 33 million gallons. We've met all standards. Um, well number eight is out of service. While we uh, change our chlorination from gas chlorine to calcium chloride, once that well is put back in service, once that changeover is complete, that well will go back in service and then we'll take well 10 out and uh, do the same change from gas to uh, calcium chloride. Uh, our hydrant flushing was completed in October. Um, we continue to replace hydrants, and, and especially with the award of that contract for tonight. Uh, lead and copper sampling uh, will start in the spring of 2020. That's a DEP requirement. Um, we have uh, completed the sprinkler system winterizing, along with the boardwalk shower winterizing and the bathroom uh, winterizing, uh, and our wastewater system is, is operating well. Great. We'll, we'll go with that. Thank you. For uh, public works, um, the winter prep is, is complete. The flags and banners are down. The uh, irrigation on the public grounds are complete. The public restrooms, uh, the, the fishing pier, all of that has been uh, winterized. The boardwalk showers have been removed. Um, all the trash and recycling enclosures have been taken off the beach. Uh, we are now uh, prepping for winter, uh, so uh, thanks to the storm that we had the other day, we did um, get our salt spreaders ready. We have our plows prepared, um, so we're, we're working our way through that, but um, we'll be ready should that need come. Um, the, we're prepping for the holiday lights, so we have, um, we're working with Atlantic Electric to replace damaged and non-working outlets. There's about 18 of them um, throughout the town that we are uh, replacing and Atlantic Electric has to then re-energize. Uh, we're also adding 17 new locations uh, and at the same time Atlantic Electric will be in to um, energize those new outlets. So we'll be able to put more of the pole lights on Dorset Avenue this year? That is correct. We That's the combination of the different decorations. And then the we ordered additional snowflakes. That is correct. For Ventnor uh, Avenue. For Ventnor Avenue. Yeah. That, well. that is correct. Yeah. So we, we have 17 new, right. um, and I think four are on Dorset Avenue for additional. Yes, because um, that was scarce on Dorset last correct. year. That is correct. And the rest are, the majority of the remaining are on Ventnor Avenue. I think we have two down the business district on Atlantic Avenue. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, for construction, for engineering, the streetscape project is ongoing and nearing completion. Uh, landscapers were in today working on the, on the bay side. They'll be back tomorrow, hopefully to finish up that side. Uh, they should be in next week, the later part of next week for the ocean side, hopefully. Sanitary sewer replacement on Kingsley Drive and the Wellington Avenue, Lafayette Avenue drainage project is ongoing as well. Uh, the drainage work is, is complete, uh, and the sanitary sewer work on Kingsley is, is ongoing. Uh, Winchester Avenue drainage project, which is uh, Washington Avenue and also New Haven um, intersections, uh, that contract has been awarded to Marandino Concrete, and the pre-construction meeting is scheduled for tomorrow, um, and then we'll get a construction schedule on that project. What time is that? Eleven. In my, in my office. <coughs> Drainage improvements in Marshall and Oxford. Uh, the engineering design is complete and we are scheduling a bid date with Cathy and uh, we would uh, at 
this point look to hopefully award at the December commission meeting. Uh, the library replacement window, or excuse me, the library window replacement project. Uh, I met with the engineer on Tuesday, I believe, and we anticipate going out to bid the end of this month uh, and having a bid opening in December for that project. Uh, the CAFR permit modification for the fishing pier has been received by the DEP. Uh, they requested one clarification, so not even a change. It was just a clarification on the datum, so I think that is moving in a positive direction. If, if that gets any bumps, I need your help right away. Of course, of course. On the agenda tonight is um, resolution, resolution 358, which is amending the contract with Sash Architects for the um, bid, for the bid preparation, and, and essentially that would be for them to uh, hold a pre-bid meeting with potential vendors to go through the project, and everything starts at that point. For the pier. For the pier, for the pier bathrooms. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, so it's it's important to have that so that people go into the bid understanding and with, with more clarity. So uh, hopefully that will be moving forward very quickly. Um, I put on here the playground repairs. Uh, mainly because for the most part they are done, or excuse me, they are done, um, but I will be recommending that we add another swing station at the library uh, park playground. There is room, uh, it is there where we can expand and I think there is a need for it. Yeah, it's a little swing. scarce. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. This was a way to get the old stuff out. And get started. And clean slate, yeah. get something there, we can always add. We have swings already there, right? Yes, we do. You want more swings? Set. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, reconstruction of Newport Avenue from Monmouth Avenue to the Bay. That's a municipal aid grant. Uh, that contract has been awarded to Mathis Construction, and construction is ongoing. Uh, the storm sewer pipe has been uh, installed. That work is completed. Concrete contractor uh, started today, um, and the concrete work will be going on through next week and then the paving would uh, follow after that. Hopefully that project will be complete early December. Newport Avenue Municipal Parking Lot Improvements, that engineering design contract has been awarded to Doran Engineering at the last meeting. I had a meeting with Doran to go over scope of work. The plan is to have that out to bid in January and complete it by May 1st. The um, NJDOT Municipal Aid Grant uh, for reconstruction of Hampshire Drive. That engineering contract has also been awarded to de Blasio Associates. They have been out and uh, completed the survey work and we're waiting for the base maps to be completed and we'll sit down and um, go over the, the, the first round of design. The Municipal Aid Grant 2019, which is Dorset Avenue from Wellington Avenue to Burke Avenue. Um, that engineering design contract has been awarded to Doran Engineering. Uh, likewise, that survey has started, uh, has not been completed yet. Met with Doran Engineering uh, last week to go over the kind of the kickoff meeting, and we that project probably will go out to bid in the spring for a fall construction to avoid the summer. And on tonight's agenda which is resolution 370 is the award of contract to uh, engineer for four engineering services to Remington and Vernick for the Dorset Avenue sanitary sewer main replacement from Calvert to Monmouth. That is a, um, it is a, a asbestos sewer pipe that has a, a failure in it. Um, and it's, it's a 10 inch pipe It carries a, fair amount of flow, a, a, we're trying to head off a, a emergency here. Um, so it's a $46,000 contract would be for the removal and replacement of that along with the laterals. This is the design. This is for the design, yeah, thank you. <coughs> and uh, that's, that's they're aware that that's a concrete load under the pier. They are aware, they, and the contractor will be aware. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm sorry, on the agenda, resolution 371, is an award of contract to Bill William McLeese Architecture 
to prepare conceptual design drawings for the renovation of the boardwalk pavilions. It's in the amount of uh, $2,750. It is to produce renderings of what an improvement to the pavilions will look like so that that can be used to solicit sponsorships, uh, potential sponsorships for the pavilions. This guy came up with our mind, had a lot of conversations with the Colors are maroon. maroon. So I, I mean, that's a, I think it'd be a, a nice improvement to the city. Yeah, we can uh, do Newport Avenue yeah. concert. Newport Avenue concert, right? That. Um, right now, it's just those. We're looking to solicit um, uh, sort of like naming rights for those three areas, <laughs> and that, and this would be a way to help solicit those mm -hmm. to make it look like an attractive thing. Like and, and, financial to to <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then at the same time, Tim, you're you're getting. Um, you received a proposal for design of signage on the boardwalk. Correct. Yeah. Right. So right. So at the same time, we're, we're going to sort of get rid of the visual noise on the boardwalk. Like we have a lot of mismatched signs, a lot of a lot of posts. Mm -hmm. So the the idea behind that would be that we're removing those 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 bent posts that have mismatched signs and <laughs> a mixture of signs at different places, and just come up with a, a single group of signs, one that would stay consistently and then two that would be switched out seasonally just because our hours change and uh, for different things like uh, dogs, on the, dogs beach, on the beach, bike riding. Bike riding. So that way it's not going to seem like such a... Too much information. Yeah, right. we're trying to simplify, put it in... in too too many words. Right. And, and also and no clean up. <laughs> <laughs> and also clean up the, no uh, the language so we'll all have like the same kind of uh, uh, blue on white that those street names already have. Right. So. No green on white? Yeah. Okay. No more green. Visual. And, and, and it's going to have, uh, you know, it's going to show that we're paying attention to it. No, absolutely. <laughs> Got rid of the drunk um, meters. Not yet. <laughs> drunk or sailor meters. In fact, I can report on that. Can you circle back to the showers? Does your budget include replacing all the new showers with new kiosks? Each year we're doing several of them. I think Ernie's got three more That's this coming year. So we're doing chunks of them right. as we go through. Great. Yeah. I think that's another big thing on the boardwalk. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful. Yeah. And then and we are looking at moving, at them, right? moving them. Yeah. Moving them, that's right. At least most of them. Um, I'm not so sure about the ones where the, we have the back beaches. Right, But right. we can talk about them. But but this end from, from uh, the library yeah. towards Atlantic City, we will pull them down to the ramps. Right, I think it's a good idea. It's Off the boardwalk. Yeah. Safer. Safer for, you know. I like that. Next to the ashtray. The sink and our, I'm sorry, but <laughs> next to the ashtray. Um, I'd like my, the thing I The say. safer is the school brand. Is that going to, is that taking some of the pedestrian and bike um, is. Uh, ideas that they came up with? Yeah. So that the, 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 there's some really interesting traffic patterns that they're, so that would, I'm assuming that's going to be executed in there. At, at the and school. Um, so at the school. So on Lafayette and, and Calvert and Bentner Gardens. I believe right. that, that's the scope of takes a piece of that. Takes a piece of that. Because we can yeah. do all of that would be too cumbersome at one time, too right. costly at one time. Right. So that, if you 
just lighting the sign. It's lighting just the, the kiosk, kiosk for that. Investigating other parking, but it's really too premature to even hint right. at that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you want me to give Margaret's report? Yes. Okay. I wasn't. I was just going to hand it to you, but this might be important for people to know. So I'm Marie Mento, the city administrator, and at the moment I'm reporting for Margaret Pakanowski, the um, tax collector, who couldn't make the meeting tonight. So um, she wanted everyone to know the fourth quarter water bills will be mailed out and they are due December 20th, and there's a grace period to December 30th. The delinquent notices will be mailed out next week, reminding that the fourth quarter and prior haven't been paid. And the online tax sale is December 27th. The first group of letters have been sent out. There will be two other letters within the month of December to remind those that are getting them. Um, hopefully a lien won't be placed on the property if they you know, make the payment. Um, I don't usually report, but I wanted to let you all know a couple things we did in the last couple weeks. Um, we had a capital meeting, and Mike was there, Ed, Al, um, Chief Biagi, and David Funk, and um, and Tim. <laughs> and we actually went through the extensive priority list from 2000. The, the priority list from 2017. If I'll just, I have copies here, but I'll show you if you remember what this looked like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, I, I wanted to have the meeting because I was getting concerned with some of the emergencies that happened out throughout the year and how the money was spent and didn't want to come back to you and say, oh, we only did half the list and there's no money left. And I'm happy to report that just about a lot on that list has either been done or is about to be done. There, I think there were a few exceptions. We went through every line item, and um, I was really excited to see um, what's been accomplished and that we pretty much stuck to the priority list even given all the emergency right. issues that we have faced since 2017 when we struck that list. And the estimating was accurate. Yeah. 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 Yep. And, and Al's done a fabulous job at keeping track of all that. He set up a whole new accounting system so that everybody knows what their item is and what their dollar is instead of grouping them and it's like who gets to it first type of scenario <laughs> so we don't have that going on anymore. Who <laughs> thinks it's fabulous? Al and you. It's the right way to do accounting. Yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not who's like the best <laughs> anymore. Oh my gosh. Right. Um, Ed, myself and, and Doug worked on a end of season sort of roadmap for next year and um, we got a lot accomplished with that. Of course, everything has a May date, and 80% of it belongs to Ed. <laughs> That's to get done. But, <laughs> um, but that was really good to put together. And um, hope, well, you know, we're going to try. Oh, Jimmy, too. Jimmy was part of that uh, meeting for some of the things that apply to construction. She's not remembering this item. Um, no, well, um, so it was good to get through that. That's a really big list of things that. Um, you know that we have to prepare for every year and if there's a better way to do it or a better timetable or stick to what we've done it works it's not broken um, so we went through all that and then Ed, Doug and myself canvassed the city looking at where we have meters where we don't loading zones um, was there anything else parking loading zones yeah, that's um, pretty much it. We're going to do the meters that we're going to do next away with. few months, we're going to do the parking analysis mm -hmm. and study mm -hmm. and recommendation right. over the next year. So we looked at what's yeah. there now, and we and we we have one more little section to, to finish. But you know, we we have lists of things like the, the poles that are hanging sideways. You know, the one the ones that should come down because there are no meters. We'll have recommendations for a couple blocks to take meters out. We might have recommendations to add meters to a few places, not a lot, just a few things to be consistent and fair. They're in front of one business, they should be in front of another business. Businesses want them right. um, <laughs> because without them, people park in front of their business all day mm -hmm. and um, they lose the opportunity of a shopper parking there. Um, and Doug had some recommendations on loading zones, you know, how to change them. Um, 
and that gives us some additional parking too, just that in itself, not a lot, but a few spots here and there. So we have one more section to do, we ran out of time, and um, we'll give that to you. Good. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And last but certainly not least, our fire chief. Yeah, uh, <laughs> my name's Michael Cahill, I'm the chief of the fire department. Today was a very good day for the fire department. They started the major construction at station two with wall panels that were delivered today. They put up 120 feet of exterior wall. The panels are 12 feet long, 24 feet high. It's the base frame for the entire structure, which is basically a large concrete block that you can just go through. There's a couple different pictures I took today. Um, very efficient crew coming in to do this today. It's only a seven member crew giant crane and four guys that just bolt everything together. It is, uh, it's absolutely going to be a major improvement for the fire department and it's gonna make our equipment uh, last a lot longer because we'll be able to house inside vehicles that now are outside in the elements. And since we keep our equipment usually 15 to 20 years, uh, this is gonna save us a lot of money in the long run on vehicle maintenance and uh, overall the way equipment operates and it looks. They expect to be uh, done the exterior frame, the masonry end of it by next Friday. So all the walls will be up, the ceilings will be in, and they go into the inside framing. The project's really gonna fly in the next uh, couple of weeks. Very, very good day for us on that one. Is the tower being prepped as well? The tower section um, or the small tower? The, the, the walls toward the front are, I believe, 37 to 40 feet high. It's all prefab. Everything on the exterior is prefab concrete. And it's one foot thick with a color layer on the outside, four inches of foam insulation for thermal protection, and the interior framing is all more four inches of concrete. It's a very structurally robust building. And it's going to say it's a minimum of a 100-year building. So, and from where we're coming from into this, it's, we're going from the outhouse to the penthouse. So it's, it's a very effective building. It's going gonna, it's gonna to serve the city well for a long time. Uh, this is the craning in the big panels. No, oh, yeah, it's, it's 100, 100 something. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be diverting traffic on Wellington for the next week, so please bear with us. There's no other way to get the stuff in. I, I, you'll get them every day, every day. All right. Well, did that come in from like that from somewhere? There, a large flatbed truck would come in with two panels on it. Oh. So they have a rotational crews going to Millville picking up the panels and back all day long. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's all fabricated in Millville. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a really nice. It's going to be a nice looking building. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, well, that's our station too. Uh, our new Quinn apparatus, which was approved a couple months ago, is now in production out in South Dakota. We'll have that hopefully mid-September next year, moving into this new building, which will be a very valuable piece of equipment for us. allows us to do our job a lot more efficiently, a lot more effectively, and it's a re replacing a 32-year-old fire engine, which I think Ventner's got well past their money out of that one. Uh, we've been very lucky in the last... Uh, month we received two major grants one from FEMA for twenty thousand dollars for it's a decontamination washer dryer for our gear which needs to be sent out if we can't clean it appropriately now we'll have that ability to do it in-house and uh, that grant um, total cost is twenty one thousand so out of my budget next year one thousand dollars gets us all that equipment which is really good and we found out this past week we received a twelve thousand dollar grant from the Fire Department of New York, uh, DeBardinero, uh, it's a, uh, they raised money for, in the memory of a New York firefighter that was killed in the line of duty when he was unable to escape a fourth floor fire. He didn't have the equipment, it's called a bailout bag that you can basically tie off and repel out of a building. Presently, Ventner does not have that equipment for any of our members, and the only firefighter in Ventner that has ever died in the line of duty would have survived if he had this equipment. So we're hopefully going to have that in-house and trained up by the, by the end of the summer. I grovel and cried. I'm 
<laughs> now it's uh, we we wrote uh, yeah we filled out the application we documented uh, a narrative we provided background on why we think this would help us and it didn't hurt that we sent the photo clippings of uh, when Ken Whalen was killed in the line of duty from a fourth floor window that was a survivable drop with this equipment that we get and they tell me the twelve thousand this year will be matched next year if we get the twelve thousand in service and rolling they'll match it and give us the remainder because the whole grant's going to the whole equipment cash will probably cost about 28000 with training, um, and they're going to match us another twelve next year, they told me. But until the check shows up, I don't believe it, but I thank them for the offer, and we'll take the 12000 to start, which is pretty good. You mentioned you had a plan with this new building to have an area. Oh, it's, it's already, if, designed into if the you look at the inside corner of that picture up there in the back, it will have a bailout steel platform for us to do this. I'm, I was planning on getting the equipment anyway. This just takes takes the we train on well we have to train we can't send people off site to train uh, we don't have the ability to pay overtime and send people out and bring people in I'm going to send people out to be train the trainers and we'll train our own people in house it saves uh, I think it's a little more effective when you're training your own people because you get to figure out who's doing it right and who you need to fix uh, when well, we're talking training uh, we've met and exceeded all of the federal and state required drills for the year um, including that we did extrication training the jaws of life uh, two weeks ago in uh, Ventnor Heights four vehicles were donated by a local resident who owns a towing company Anthony Miranda um, we were able to train in the city for free on something that we hopefully never really have to do much but uh, we learn a whole lot by practicing with those tools and it's unless you have a vehicle you can literally crush and cut to nothing you can't use these tools and drill on them. so he was very generous to supply us with uh, cars and we were able to get good uh, I think we totaled out at 160 hours of training for the members of the department on duty nobody uh, had to come in and be paid uh, included in our training this year was we retrained the entire department on our new air packs our the bottles we wear on our back so we can breathe in fires which we received in a grant from last year. They're all in service and operating now, and they're, very, they're a very effective piece of equipment. Uh, we've begun our capital planning with uh, Al, and he's guiding me through the process. Mm -hmm. So we have pretty much our needs for the next five or six years on paper. He just has to tell me whether they're realistic or not. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, on the whole, as the end of October came through, our call volume for the department is up 9% from the same day of last year. So we're, we're j busier than we've been. And we're still trying to get a lot of stuff done. There we go. Thanks, Chief. Did you, uh, anybody else? We're good? Everybody's done? We're good, Lisa. Yeah, we did good. Okay. So we will take a three minute break. The department heads can stay in the audience if you like. If not, you may leave. Have a wonderful night. Thanks for coming. Thanks for doing a great job for the city of Ventnor. We'll go up there, and then we'll go into our workshop. Thanks, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Guy.
Okay, so now we'll go into our workshop port of portion of this evening where we will go through the agenda on what we will be voting on right after the workshop portion. But before we do that, we do have, um, it's not really a presentation, or is it, Di? Well, certainly for this board. Okay, so we have uh, Diane Burbeck, who is involved in a lot of the volunteer work <laughs> in the city of Ventnor. Would be here a while just naming all the departments she helps. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I wanted to come and speak with the department when the department heads were here, um, basically uh, reporting on some of the activities that the green team has been involved in. And for those people that aren't aware, the green team is an appointed uh, committee of volunteers that are um, working on environmental issues, um, basically we're trying to get initiatives that improve our sustainability as a community, which contributes to the county and the state. Uh, with these initiatives, actions, uh, studies, and uh, influences, uh, we're, we accumulate points to get certified uh, through Sustainable Jersey, and this certification allows us to receive grants, which we've uh, secured several. Um, some of the actions that we've taken um, and worked on uh, were before any of you had your positions, so uh, I'm just sort of going through a little history. Um, the banners that we have now in the city, uh, the effort with that uh, was a fundraiser that started with uh, the Knights of Ventnor Go Green Parade and some of the businesses on uh, Dorset Avenue where the lighting and along through the city was inconsistent. Uh, some would work, some would not work. So, and it was sort of like not, con there was no continuity to the holiday decorations. So we, Nice and Ventnor Go Green, along with many of the businesses on Dorset Avenue, purchased banners uh, to go along Dorset Avenue, since that was the entrance, main entrance to the city. Uh, those banners say, uh, welcome to Ventnor. Uh, generic winter scene. Uh, from that, also we wanted to uh, lower our carbon footprint by not having the lights, so the banners were going to be the holiday. Then the city, uh, under Mayor uh, Kelly, arranged to purchase more banners throughout the town. Uh, since then, uh, St. Leonard's Track purchased banners, and we have all the, the brackets. Um, but some of the brackets, or the poles that fit in the brackets, have been knocked down. Uh, some of the banners don't get put up. So. I'm requesting that possibly in the budget in the future that we replace some of the poles and add to the collection of uh, banners so that the whole entire city could have a uniform look. Um, there are pretty much brackets on most of the poles that the banner replacement is relatively inexpensive compared to the initial investment. Um, one of the other uh, initiatives that we worked on was the grant for the uh, portable water tower. Uh, currently housed at the fire department. It's a shared um, item that we share with uh, Margate and Longport for outdoor activities. Um, what the whole purpose of that is to educate people on the alternative to single-use plastic bottles. That there's another way it can be done. Um, and there's a couple things that would enhance that uh, education throughout the community. Uh, and I already talked to Ed about uh, adding some outdoor water hookups so that we can use it around the library for the events there. Um, it needs to be hooked up to a hose uh, or a hose uh, bracket. Um, and one of the things that is really important to, as a community, that we um, try to 
encourage people to use something like a water filter instead of single-use plastic bottles is when we have our special events in the summer, the, the runs, uh, the na national night out, um, I know Mike Avina has used it for the outdoor concerts, is that it is um, placed in an area where people are, where it's visible, but also that we don't offer the single-use plastic bottles. And that will also um, cut down our recycling tipping fees uh, because people bring their own bottles and they can get filtered water. So if that can be, you know, put in the budget and put in the plan to have those faucets made available, that would encourage that program. Um, the other thing, um, I commend the commissioners for uh, putting up with the uh, plastic bag ordinance. Uh, took some heat in the beginning, but we got a lot of really good press. Um, a lot of people are, a lot of communities are jumping on it. Uh, again, that was an educational uh, program, and a fine example is on uh, Fridays in the summer, you see everybody walking down the street with a bag under their arm uh, for the farmer's market. So that the policy was really a positive for our community. Um, also, the uh, Trash containers are really great. Um, took some heat, took, had to weather that storm, but I think the storm has passed. And uh, it really has made a significant improvement in our streets and how, how our community looks on trash day, on other days, the stuff doesn't blow around. It looks pretty, doesn't it? It does, it really is. Um, Uniform, it's pretty, it's clean. It's less on the street, but like she said, it it's is. less yeah. blowing that, that, that's, I wanted it for three years. Yeah, and significantly, the plastic bag, um, we don't see as many of them in the streets. No, and talking about the plastic bags, I, because I'm in Acme, in and out, and of course, I know everybody in there, and I asked them shortly, well, a couple months after we did the ordinance, they said they use, it's like hardly any plastic bags. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the, the reduction of yeah I mean so and that's a big that's our biggest store in Metner so people right. people bring it or they carry their two three items out with them right and we're hoping that the uh, state will pass a uniform yeah. uh, bill that's where it's going. so that we don't have to have Margates and Atlantic City's bags floating floating down the stream mm -hmm. um, but there is a, a something that I am concerned with and as a green team we uh, did voice our opposition to the policy of suspending street cleaning through uh, the summer months. Um, I had people stop me on the street, aren't you on that green team? How come you're letting this, this go on? Uh, I know my block alone, I get about a pack of cigarette butts a week or a day because um, everybody's at the light flicking their butts out the, the window. Um, I know that there was complaints uh, about issues with parking um, and I know that you, we respond to voices, but i um, wondering how many voices need to be uh, heard to reconsider that policy for next summer. And the reasoning being is we do the, the bay cleanups, we do the beach cleanups. Um, you know, you've worked, picked up trash from behind the, the stores that blows in, um, but as soon as uh, we get a rainstorm in the summer, all the trash and the cigarette butts and everything in the street goes immediately out to the bay. And uh, I know Atlantic City's had a lot of heat about uh, their storm drains emptying into Gardner's Basin and the, the trash that floats. And I know as a boater, um, I have my net ready. We're scooping up things all the time. Um, but if, you know, what, what would it involve to revisit that policy we will okay we will thank you we will look at it we will look at no yeah there's, that's there's, what she means I, she it is a it. huge we will problem oh, half the streets don't get cleaned in the summer because people can't move their cars right no place to put them mm. no place to put them so i think in conjunction with the so parking we that's, analysis, that's one of the reasons we're looking at a parking analysis for the whole city um we're going to bring in a, a consultant that does that traffic engineer and he will look at the entire city from a parking um and traffic standpoint right. right that may be something we can work on but they're looking at watching a sweeper go down a street in the summertime and not sweeping anything on one side because people or both sides because mm -hmm. nobody's moving their cars they're paying the tickets 
So that was that was the problem. And so, the people that have, and, 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 if, and they, if they live here and they have to move their car because of street cleaning, there's nowhere for them to jockey their car. Right. That's the so issue. it wasn't that it, it, they, they didn't want to move their car. There was nowhere for them to right. move their car. Right. So, I don't have, I get so that's why we did there's it. There's no perfect it's, answer. It's, yeah. and it's, no, it's, yeah. it's the push other, pull of that. Yeah, there's also, we were using our entire parking enforcement service to work on that on that alone, on that issue alone, and other areas of the city weren't being enforced during those days. We've got to find a better balance. Yeah, I hear you. I, I see it. I mean, I my street, it, there's no problem on my street, and I know that on so you're you're on Cambridge. Doug? Yeah, because your street's wider. We have yeah yeah, and people will move their car from one side to the other. But in so I'll I'll take our street as an example right here, Harbor. Oh, forget it. it. Can't do it can't move your car unless you have off-street parking which I'm luckily I, I do mm -hmm. a lot of people on our street don't uh, how many tickets have you gotten for not moving your your car one or two a year <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, but I also I also go down um, Winchester and Monmouth on a weekday and you know I can play cornhole in the street on a weekday we added that. Right. on a weekend forget it right. Right. but we I, they were clean last year that, yeah, we yeah. Did, all the parallel all the ones that parallel with the boardwalk are still clean I, I but I mean, but my is around around the corner that. But it wasn't happening, so we, we have to find a better way. Yeah, okay. and I we, promise we that we will have this honestly hear you. issue brought up yeah. to that um, to that professional that's going to look at a 360 view of the whole mm -hmm. city because it, it's one. It's I think it's part of the it's part of the, the the issues that keep getting brought up. And we had a, a little round table that was split. I think there were about 60 people there. It was about 50 50. We brought the issue up about. People that preferred it and people that wanted it, the, you know, wanted it stopped. So um, we want. That's why we're reaching out to professionals to to look at it as how we can dovetail it into a, a common sense ordinance. Okay. But, good. But, good topic to bring up. Yeah. It yeah. really is, yeah. and it needs further you know, discussion and, and and some research. You know, if we can get some of that stuff from from our traffic consultant that we hope to bring on soon. By this summer, maybe we can make that that change then. Right. I don't know. I don't we'll have to see. How about some guys with brooms ben, on a public works truck? So we actually we actually <laughs> looked. <laughs> we at, did that, right? If, you, if you've been through Atlantic City, you see the little they call them um, LTVs. They're they're little vacuum vehicles. They look like a yeah bumped up golf cart. Right. With a hose little, with a yeah. trunk thing coming around. You know, we've looked at that. Uh, we're not sure that's the direction that that we really want to go. Mm -hmm. um, but Ed has looked at it. They're expensive vehicles. To, to purchase um, they're not cheap um, and that's something that can help at the street corner specifically because you don't have parking at the ends right and that's where our, our drains are so we can get right them clean and up. everything goes in the drain and then Absolutely. this public works guys are shoveling it out every time it rains yep. right. because the streets flooded with you know leaves and everything in the downtown so yep. that, that yeah. would be an improvement so the, the back truck will help that too right when that we should have hopefully next summer sometime right um, to help so we're getting a truck we're getting a vehicle that just cleans out the storm drains on our own that, mm -hmm. so, so that'll be an improvement but, okay thanks but, man. thanks, yep, for, everything, thank thanks you. for everything you do what, what maybe we should do is when we have maybe not every month but have somebody from the green team have somebody from our ad hoc committee yeah come and and, and do what diane just yeah, did yeah the ad hoc committee could and and do it during our heads, yeah. works yeah, yeah. Right, so yeah. We'll, we'll try and do that maybe not every month diane but definitely yeah, yeah. quarterly or something Yeah, we were. They had one meeting. One meeting. We only had one meeting in those months. Yeah, so, but we, we would like to do. I think that's a good idea to add that. That's it. Important that's stuff. Green team is is always bringing up good ideas to us. We don't always listen. We try, but uh, Diane, make sure we listen. Yeah, she does. <laughs> she does. No, and thank we you. appreciate everything. Thank you, everything you do. Everything you do. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Before we go into the other items, um, I see John Henderson here. You are on our agenda tonight for um, us to approve your license for the Seafood Festival for, for 20, that was a lot, Seafood Festival for 2020. And it's going to be throughout the meeting, so if you don't want to stay, but did you want to say a few things about the festival or no? I thought you might want to. Some PG things, John. Yes, yes, real PG. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm a guy who doesn't mind hearing himself talk, so you put a microphone in front of me, I'm yeah, going to talk exactly. into it, right? Um, I, you know, I think uh, when Donna and I, we put together, I mean, I think we have a two-year plan, right? For the agreement, it's going to happen for two years, so essentially the same agreement, because we like Vetner. Uh, as far as the festival goes, you know, we really wanted to be here in case there were community questions, you know, about how the festival went down, anybody who had concerns or anything, we posted it on our social media as well, just to, you know, try to garnish a little attention if anybody had, you know, concerns about the community or wanted to see changes for 2021, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25. You know, we're here to essentially answer those questions before the vote goes. Uh, but yeah, the, the festival, I think we've got some major changes. You know, I think it's safe to put some of them out there, right? Sure, um, sure. So for 2020, we're going to change the uh, change the schedule. We're going to go from noon to 9, and we're going to close the uh, the event off at 8.45 with fireworks. Awesome. So, you know, we're going to celebrate seafood. We're all going to, you know, enjoy our families, enjoy a beer, and, you know, watch some stuff get blown up. <laughs> Great. <laughs> It was wonderful. What was the, what was the count, approximately? 6,600. Yeah, me, right? just over 6,000. 6,000. Yeah, you know, and we kept going back and forth. You know, oh, we're going to see 3,000. Oh, crap, we're going to see 10,000, you know. So it was keeping it in that place. And I know uh, now that you guys are working on some revitalization of the park and some parts of the park, I think there's um, some stuff we can help with, you know, as far as, yes. hey, here's, here's some usage things for not just myself but other events that could, you know, find their way to Ski Beach because it's a fantastic area. I mean, you know, I it took state really convincing me and Donna kept poking me in the back like no no, no this is gonna work uh, to see the the vision and you know you posted that picture yeah. uh, that we currently use as our event piece and it'll actually probably be the header of our uh, of our uh, website but it, it really worked it was it felt like a community event it's really what it, it really did. did transform the whole space you know the 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 level of intimacy that changed from Baderfield to Ski Beach changed the entire festival. I mean, from, I had restaurants that were just raving. You know, they were apprehensive. They were apprehensive about kind of changing from a festival that at one point did over 20,000 attendees to kind of downsizing from two day to one day and turning into the event that it did. And when everybody was leaving, it was just smiles. Yeah. You know, I mean, putting an ice cream truck at the uh, exit didn't hurt either, right? That was the, <laughs> best. That was the um, best. But yeah, so, you know, our plans next year, you know, spread it out a little more. Um, you know, if we can kind of garnish a little more space, I will make a suggestion if it's a possibility. There's a plot of land that's, that's for sale right next to it. Scoop that up. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, you know, we, funny thing that's never happened in 20 years of producing events is we ran out of beer. <laughs> I blame Lance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, we really just, you know, looking for, you know, never the, run the out approval. Of beer before? In 20 years of doing events, I've never run out of beer. Yeah. And I throw a major beer festival, and I've never run out of beer. So, um, yeah, that re really just wanted to be here, you know, in case you guys had questions. You know, I know we're pretty much all good to go for the most part. You know, really looking for at the community to say, hey, we're here, and we can answer questions if anybody had them. All right. Well, that was it. It's going to be somewhere down, so I don't know if you want to hang out. If there's questions later about it, we can write them down and get them to you. If you don't yeah, want I got to a meatloaf at home that's got my name on it. Uh, there you go. So... <laughs> It was a great event. Guys, thank you for all thank your support. You. I mean, we were, you know, that, you know, I can go back and f rant on and on and on all day about the change from, you know, location A to, you know, our new home. And I'm not going to because we're here, right? So it works. And we're glad you're here. We so are, thank you. We are, yeah. thank great you. job. And thank you got to thank Donna for her persistence. We have. She's I just literally unblocked her phone number, so it's <laughs> a good thing. <laughs> thank you, John. Thanks, Stacy. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Stacey. Yeah, that was a wonderful event. It was. It was great. Uh, intimacy is what it was. You could hear the music, the whole event. It was great. It was great. It was. It felt good, right? It yeah. Did. It did. I didn't realize I was walking for nine hours. It did. It felt good. All right, so we do not have any minutes to approve. We do have a public hearing tonight on street opening uh, hardship on 102 South Washington Avenue. I don't think we have any questions on that, right? I don't believe so. Tim? Standard okay. Stuff. <clears throat> We do have a ordinance introduction, and that's 2019-022022, and that is an ordinance authorizing the city of Ventnor to purchase 6510 to 6512 Ventnor Avenue in the city. That is the um, property that burned down. July 4th weekend. July 4th weekend. Mm. So um, do we want to discuss what our plans are for that? Sure. Right? Sure. We're doing. We, we want it as a um, 
like a pocket just, park. For, Mayor, yeah. um, Lisa just asked to remind, just to, to make a statement that ordinance 21 and 23 were pulled. Yes. yes. So just, just so everybody knows. 2019-021 and-023 were pulled, were pulled from the agenda. Yeah. And I, I know 23 will be back probably yes. in January. Okay. Uh, the, the asked that to be postponed a little bit so he could get a better feel for for that redevelopment plan. So, gotcha. And this is not the plaza one, which we're really no, poor with tonight. We have tonight right. This is the one next to it, yes. the uh, Dollar, Dollar General, General site. Yes. So. Okay. okay. So, Tim, do you want to just um, briefly uh, let the public know why we decided to buy that property? What, what, what our plans are? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a it's right in the um, the major central downtown area. Um, it was an I think it's an opportunity to create more green space, more open space, and activate uh, things for um, potentially for um, for just our residents and our and maybe specifically our our, uh, uh, our younger residents to have. Uh, a pocket park in that area and to retain some green space which I think is something that um, uh, any city should look out to do so uh, hopefully um, when the sale is final we'll have some design work um, for that okay. and we'll there are some issues that we're working out mm -hmm. right so we'll keep you posted yep. okay great okay then we will have three um, public hearings and adoptions of those ordinances. The first one is 2019-018, and that is um, amending Chapter 102, and that's dealing with the development mental uh, regulations of building in the heights or building heights. Building heights, not building, building in heights. the heights. Building heights. And that's dealing with flat roofs. It is. There. So what we're amending is, and we've we've already talked about this. It went back to the planning board for their discussion. Um, we, we've change the building height for flat roof structures from 28 feet to 31 feet. The board looked at, um, we were granting that variance a lot uh, for homes that were coming in. With the flat roof structures, people wanted more, more ceiling height internal, and that's what you want. You want these grand you know, windows to show our beachfront, to show our, our bayfront, and wherever else you are in the city. So the three feet that we're changing this is not really visible on the, from the naked eye on the street, but it allows the architecture to really work within the building. And Tim, you get this more than anybody, you see it. Yeah, constantly um, people want the, not only that, you have the TGIs that are wider now, and then people want You're that. gonna have to explain what TGIs uh, uh, the, the roof, the <laughs> floor systems in between floors as you stack them up are wider, and then the uh, and then people want that 108, that, that 108 inches of mm -hmm. living space yep. on, on the main floors. So the, the planning board actually talked to five arch local architects yep. and they all really concurred that, that this number of nine feet stack and right. the 31 foot limit was what people are asking for. So it also puts the city in a place where we're saying, uh, you know, we're encouraging this kind of development. We want, we want people to, not to, have, right. um, to have the types of homes that they're asking for in the marketplace anyway. So and they <coughs> have to go and for bless, you. bless you. They would not have to come to the board. Right. They yeah. stay within these parameters now. They're, they're right. Right. It, it amends some other things. There's some exceptions for for um, parapets uh, and traditional chimneys are permitted to go above that line. You don't, like certain you don't want mechanicals up there. That right. Kind of we, yeah, no mechanicals up on that roof. Right. No rooftop decks on these on these flat roof structures. So Right. Um, no, I think it's... Okay. The next is Ordinance 2019-019, and this is the ordinance... Um, of us adopting the uh, Ventnor Plaza redevelopment plan. Correct. And we, again, this came to us for introduction. It went to the planning board. They vetted it uh, at our last month's meeting. Um, and now it's back for adoption. What this does, it, it opens up a lot of different opportunities for the Ventnor Plaza. Um, not only the self storage that everyone seemed to focus on, but a lot of other uses out there um, phased in. At certain levels of, of development, they would have to start doing um, property improvements, um, landscaping, uh, entrance ways. If certain things happen, you know, they talked about you know convenience store kind of a thing out in, on a pad site, possibly a restaurant out on a pad site, those types of things. Um, they would have to do certain improvements to the property as part of those tasks. This does not give them carte blanche. What this does is, is it sets certain land use development parameters for that property um, that will still have to come to the planning board okay. for site plan approvals right. for any proposed development, even even within the structure. So when they 
say they get the, store, the self storage contractor to come in there or, or um, operator to come in there, they'll have to come to the, the planning board, get their site plan approval for that. So we'll, we'll get our, our bite at the apple to look at these things each right. time. And, and what this really does, and you heard the testimony from Mr. Tevak, I think he's still here. Yeah. Testimony, he's an attorney, he doesn't testify, he, he, he speaks. <laughs> so, um, talking about how difficult it is to operate a retail facility in this day and age. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody buys things online. Amazon. Uh, Even the most, the simplest things. Yeah. Buy. So, mm -hmm. you know, the Radio Shack struggled mm -hmm. there. So, this right. opens up opportunities to different types of development but also because it's creating a redevelopment area right uh, they can partner with the city with a pilot program in a payment in lieu of taxes right and we've encouraged the owners of, of the property lamar and the, there's group to come in and do that with us right because that's a benefit to us right a benefit to them saves them dollars but we get more dollars here locally right which is nice and, and that's really the, i tell you that's the really answer here is that it's, it is. it's we're, we're, we're trying to we're trying to increase the amount of rateables that are coming commercially Helping our yep. residents, you know, in that way. So that's that's those are that's a real long-term vision. I it think. is. So I, I think it's a great. It, it's a tool that 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 I use on a daily basis in Atlantic City to try and get people to come into that community. Right. Um, we want to take advantage of it here as well. Uh, that's why the theater is where it is. Yeah. You know that that's one of the reasons why that came to town. Absolutely. So th this is a good thing, and, and I full wholeheartedly support it. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're good. Absolutely. All right. And you discussed it on the last meeting, so we don't need to beat the horse. No. Okay. Sorry. I don't know. No, no, I didn't mean we that. I just meant I don't need to add anything because it was all just yeah. you had the first reading last last meeting. Okay. So the next is ordinance um, public hearing and the adoption of ordinance 2019-020, and that is um, amending chapter 217, which is our parking permits to go from two years to one year. And we're doing that because of the study we're doing. Correct. And we don't know what's going to come of it. Correct? correct? Okay. So that just makes things make sense. It does. Okay. Then we will have a list of resolutions that we will vote on by consent. I will go through them um, as quickly as I can. The ones that our superintendent of public works talked about, Ed Stinson, I will just mention it because he already discussed it in detail. I won't repeat or try to repeat what he said. So the first one is 2019-351. And this is uh, us. It allows us to uh, submit a grant application and execute a grant agreement with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security for the 20 fiscal year 2020 FEMA flood mitigation uh, assistance program. I don't think we need to. That's self-explanatory, correct? I think so. Okay. Next is 2019-352. This is another grant, but this is for um, from. The Homeland Security, but it, this is for pre-disaster. Uh, pre so I guess there are two separate pots of money, right, right. Al? Yes. Do mitigation. we know how much money? Um, for for this grant, it's like uh, twenty thousand, I believe. But for, this for both? One. Yeah. Okay. Next is two thousand nineteen three fifty three. That is closing out an escrow account. Next is 2019-354, and that is we are hiring two, two, am I right? Two police officers. Two police officers, and we're hiring them through intergovernmental transfer agreements, which means they're not getting hired off of a cert list. They're getting hired through this, correct? Correct. Looks which like one from Salem County and one from Camden County Camden. Sheriff's Office, both right. Sheriff's Office. Yep. And they're being, office. they're being sworn in Monday, 830. Okay. Okay. Try and be here. All right. 8.30 Monday morning. Am I right, Lisa? Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I'll text you and remind you. Thank you. You're welcome. Next it's always a show when the mayor swears at somebody. <laughs> so. you don't well, I to. usually know everybody. I don't think I'm going to know these two. You're going to have to yeah. find some dirt on them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I will know them. Wouldn't she that be scary? everybody else that comes here to get sworn in, so you've got to find well, something. Well, these are from not, they're not from the area, so the I might wedding, not know them. The wedding photographer. <laughs> you have your work cut out for you. I know. Next is 2019-355, um, and that is um, we extended our agreement with uh, Atlantic County government for um, shared service for information technology services, and that is actually something that Jim talked about today when he, t when he talked about his, um, what's going on about the, the email going to the iCloud. Right. All this was um, worked with the county. Right. 
uh, virtualization, virtualization yes. of all our um, uh, PCs. So we're going to be more, um, uh, we're going to be safer from cyber attacks and um, and the help desk that the that they uh, they offer. We're right. getting off to a slow start, but a good, but it's been productive. Yes. Next is 2019-355, uh, oh no, I just did that, sorry, 356. Now, Al, this I have a question. It says authorizing a cancellation of tax. So this, the next one is a tax overpayment refund. But what is, do you know? Cancellation of tax is because uh, the person became exempt from taxes, um, a disabled veteran. Okay. okay. And then the other right. one said overpayment. Gotcha. Okay. okay, so that's, I didn't, didn't know how that happens. I was going to ask the same question. Yeah, because yeah. I never saw that. And then the next is 2019-357, and that's authorizing a refund of a tax overpayment. We know what that is. The next is 2019-358. Ed Stinson discussed that, that dealing with your bathroom. So we're going to move on. The next is 2019-359, and this is a transfer of the liquor license from, I'm going to say what everybody knows it as, Mo uh, Moonlight Liquors because um, I can't pronounce the, the LLC name, to Big A Property Liquor Holdings. So that's just a transfer from one. This is a package out. liquor license. Yes, Correct. package. This and is not. It'll right. currently be a pocket license because there has, no bit, had, there has not been an established location at this time. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Next is 2019-360, and that is uh, us approving the, li the license for this Down Beach Seafood Festival, September 2020. And John spoke on that. Next is 2019-361, and that is a, a deposit refund for someone that used our community building. Next is 2019-362, it's a tax abatement for 110 South Washington Avenue. The next is 2019-363, another tax abatement for 105A North Little Rock Avenue. The next is 2019-364, and that's authorizing our CFO to transfer appropriations. And this is something that is done annually, and it has to wait till November every year. Correct. When you see line items that are underspent and line items that might be, could be overspent at the end of the year, we can transfer within the line items. Correct. Based on the state statutes. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. Was that good? Yes. Okay. So where am I? 365. Okay, thank you. 2019-365 is um, Ed Stinson talked about. That's the Water Works Supply Company, um, the um, fire hydrants. Next is 2019-366, and with great pleasure, it's a resolution for us to vote on to reappoint our city clerk. Lose the hand. The next is 2000. It also adds some things to it. There's the next ones. Okay. Yeah, sorry. we have three okay. separate ones. Gotcha. Yep. The next is 2019-367, and this is designating Lisa Han as our human resource officer to assist employees who are victims of domestic violence. The next is 2019-368, and that is again designating Lisa Han as our designated employee representative for the city of Ventnor. We good? I have to put all these letters after your name now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are. The next is 2019-369, uh, and this is refunding uh, one of our ice cream vendors who returned his ID. We refund them back $20 if they return their ID at the end of the season. The next is 2019-370, and Ed spoke on this. This is the um, uh, Remington and Vernick for the design and inspection of the um, Dorset Avenue sanitary main, uh, sewer main replacement. Next is 2019-371. Again, this Ed spoke on William McLeese, McLeese? McLeese. McLeese, architect to prepare a conceptual design drawing for the pavilions. And that's all of the resolutions. So now, we, can, we will open it up to the public. Um, if anyone like to speak on anything that we that I just talked about and we're going to be voting on. So do I have a motion to open to the public? Motion to open to the public? Yeah. Do I have a second? So moved. All in favor? Second. Sorry. Aye. 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 Okay, so now it's open to the public. Anyone like to speak on anything that we talked about and we were going to be voting on? Come up to the microphone, state your name and your address, and whatever you want to ask us about what we're going to vote on. 
I see none. Do I have a motion to close public portion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 We didn't do a discussion. Do we want to do our discussions now? We didn't see it in there. No, I don't have it in here either. It's on the very bottom. Of the very bottom. Page. Oh, at the end. Oh, there we go. Yeah, bills and payroll. Yep, yeah, bills and payroll and then discussion. Yes, I'm sorry. We got to get to the vote. You want to do section. discussions? Yeah, real quick. Okay. Just a couple things. Um, we touched on it briefly with, with a photograph of one of our guys. Uh, we had a water main break last night at about midnight on Monmouth Avenue at Harvard, the intersection there. Real tricky break. They're all tricky, but this one was, was more so because it had how many pipes had six different pipes within a you know very close proximity. Um, the work the guys did today, as the contractor standing there, Arthur Henry standing there saying, you're going to have to put insertion valves all around this thing and shut down all these lines, talking $50,000 in, in just parts, not even labor, to put insertion valves in. Um, our guys got in the hole and clamped this, this leak down. It's cold. It's miserable. It is not fun work. These guys did it. They were there all night long trying to get to this spot. You have to pump everything down because it fills up the hole because water's coming out of it. The valves in this community are 80 to 100 years old. They don't always work. So that was the problem. We couldn't get the valve shut down. So what you have to do is do insertion valves. It's very expensive. So the work our guys did today, with the help of Arthur Henry, you know, they were there, but you know, Danny Bagnell, KJ, what's his first name? Is it? <laughs> okay, anyway, those were the guys who were, were down doing the work in, in the hole. Danny Bags was in there, you know, his hands freezing, but got the work done. I, I had to give a shout out today. This was 6.30 this morning when we were out there. But can't they wear any kind of special gloves? No, it, it's, you, you need, you're working with tools, right? It's just, yeah. You come out next time. I'll call you. Okay. <laughs> I'll call you. So I, I just really wanted to thank those guys. And please, out. Ed, I thanked them today, but make sure I meant you, that I mentioned tonight because they, they did yeoman's work this morning and all night long. It was. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to get that phone call at, at 1230 that on a 20 degree night that the water main broke. No. Yeah. Worse is the sewer, but we don't want to talk about that. No, that, no don't do it. So. Okay. But I just wanted to thank them. Great. Um, Beyond that, I think um, that, that's kind of it. We talked about the streetscape. I won't go into that too much. Okay. We got some projects. Oh, I do want to say something. Kingsley Drive. Um, beyond the utility work that we're doing out there, uh, we reached out to Atlantic Electric. While they're doing all this work, Atlantic Electric is going to replace the lights. Uh, it's kind of dark back there, so we're going to get some new lights on the poles. Great. From Atlantic Electric going to do that. So. That's all I got. All right, Tim. Anything? You're no, good. I, the department heads handled it nicely. Yeah, we cover a lot. Okay, so we'll go into the voting part of our meeting. We do not have any minutes to approve, so the first item is close the workshop. Yeah, we should close. Oh, the that's workshop. right. Sorry. Do I have a motion to close the workshop portion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We'll go in right into the meeting. Pro we do not have any approval of minutes this meeting so the first item is a public hearing on the hardship street opening of 102 south washington avenue so this is open to the public if anyone would like to speak on this item do i have a motion to, to open do i have a motion for to open the public hearing we'll motion. Do that is, is there anyone here from 102 south washington yes avenue? they're right there could you step forward That's his support. So. Can, can you raise your right hand? Yes. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Just very briefly tell us why you need the hardship. We are building it. We did a major renovation on our home. Home was almost 100 years old. Uh, we, uh, we were advised to replace the water and sewer lines, and because of that, we have to open the street up. Okay. And that was at the direction of our public works? Yes. yes. I asked you. Yep. So... That's, there's, there's your reason why this is a hardship on them. We would like new connections. We would like uh, to get out the old um, lead connection, I'm pretty sure, for the water lines. So, yeah, go absolutely. Ahead. And when Lisa prepares the uh, resolution, she needs information to put in there. Okay. Plus, now, if anyone from the public wants to come forward and comment, they come. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I I'm sorry. I guess I should ask you to state your name. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
have a motion to open public hearing. So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Does anyone from the public like to get up and speak on this matter? I see none. Do I have a motion to close public portion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry. Okay, the next. What, just so they know what happens. Now we do a resolution. Correct. You, you prepare a resolution right. and you're on the agenda and you can vote at that time. And we'll do okay. it in December. We'll do it in December. We'll do it in December. Right. We'll, we'll take care of that. And, and part of it will contain it. You don't have to be your candidate if you want to, but part of it will contain information that says it will comply with any request of the city engineer as they're doing the street opening and connect, making the connection. Thank you. Okay. Next item is the introduction of ordinance 2019-022. And this is the um, ordinance authorizing the purchase of 6510 to 6512 Ventnor Avenue, City of Ventnor. Do I have a motion to introduce the ordinance? Motion to introduce ordinance 2019-022. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kreeble? Yes. Commissioner Langreff? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Okay, next is a public hearing on um, amending chapter 102, and this is the, the heights, yes. the building heights, yep. not the heights in the building. <laughs> okay, so uh, do I have a motion to open public hearing? Motion over to public hearing on ordinance 2019-018. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, this is open to the public. If anyone like to speak on this ordinance? I see none. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to introduce, uh, I'd like to adopt ordinance 2019-018. Do I have a motion to adopt the ordinance? Motion to adopt ordinance 2019-018. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kreeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Next is our public hearing on 2019-019, Ventnor Plaza Redevelopment. Do I have a motion to open to the public public hearing? Motion to open public on ordinance 2019-019. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone like to from the audience for the oh, well, the public like to speak on this? I see none. Do I have a motion to close public portion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Next, I'd like to adopt um, ordinance 2019-019. Do I have a motion to adopt the ordinance? Motion to adopt ordinance 2019-019. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kreeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Our last public hearing of the night is 2019-012, and that is our uh, parking permit fees and the uh, length of the fee. Do I have a, a motion to open public hearing? Zero two oh. Yeah. Zero two oh. What did I say? One two. Oh, sorry. <laughs> zero two oh. Motion to open public hearing on ordinance 2019-020. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone like to speak on this public hearing? No, I see none. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? Mo so moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do I have a motion to adopt 2019-0020? Why do I want to say one? Is that funny? <laughs> zero two zero. Motion to adopt ordinance 2019-020. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in uh, Lisa, roll call, please. Mr. Kreeble? Yes. Mr. Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Next, uh, do I have a motion to adopt resolutions by consent 2019-351 through 2019-371. Do I have a motion? Motion to adopt resolutions by consent 2019-351 through 2019-371. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kreeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Next, we have bills and payrolls. Our CFO will give us the amounts. Okay, for the amount for the payroll was $527,293.80. And the amount of the bill list is $8,750,472.97. Do I have a motion to approve bills and payroll stated from our CFO? Motion to approve bills and payroll. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kreeble? Yes. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Do we have a safety report tonight? I don't see one. Do not. No, okay. And we 
we're good with comments, statements. Yeah, we're kind of doing sports okay. coverage. Okay, so now I'll, I'll open it to the public, and you, this is the time anybody can you can come up and speak on anything you like. So, do I have a motion to open to the public? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so it's open to the public. If anybody here would like to speak on anything, <laughs> state your name, your address. Andy Starr, 500 North Cambridge. A couple things, a couple comments about the, uh, the, uh, the meetings of the department heads, and then I wanted to put my farmer's market hat on just for a moment, tell a short story. Um, regarding Jerry's report about pickleball and tennis courts, um, I just wanted to add to that um, because my wife Penny is an enormous pickleball player these days. And um, during the summer, it's jammed over there, as, as you obviously figured out. But what goes on actually after the summer leave, leave after everybody leaves in the summer, uh, and when the summer's over, is pretty cool because there's an app that most of the pickleball players are using called Team Reach. So every morning, my wife is, is getting texts and, and going through that app and finding out who's going to be playing pickleball that day not only here, but in Margate. And so as late as last week, every morning, she's checking, and she, sometimes they all, you know, four or five, six people go down to Margate, and they meet with Margate people, and other days the Margate people come up here and play, and it's just, it's just, it's a wonderful app that's really also helped sort of bring that pickleball community together. Cool. The summer's easy, because it's jammed over right. there, because everybody's here. But this, I suspect the spring will be the same thing once once winter That's breaks. So I wanted to let you know that that Facebook and our web page. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a the, the the team app. We use it in the rowing club sometimes. Yeah, it's it's not just pickleball, but the pickleball world has really adopted it here yeah. locally. Yeah. And they're always talking, and it's really an added wonderful thing to to in terms of the usage so and, and the community. Name, they name uh, like a, a portal for that. What is the what is the team app? name for the pickle is it vendor pickleball courts or is it I'm not sure I'm not on it yeah um, <laughs> even though yeah, even though I'm a card carrying pickleball person here <laughs> right. but uh, I don't know Penny just said I just know his team reaches the app gotcha. but somehow it really works and I just wanted to add to yeah, what we'll Jerry had reported the other thing um, and I guess Ed is gone um, I heard him report about the showers on the boardwalk and this has been an, a pet issue for me I've had multiple meetings with the chief about safety on the boardwalk as well as the Dorset Avenue Bridge, but leave that one alone. And Chief Biagi had told me a month or so ago that he was working with Ed Stinson about moving some of the showers mm -hmm. off uh, because it's, it's, it's horribly unsafe um, with all the bikers and then you have little kids and so forth showering and then you have all the benches and it's a very narrow space. So I, I really was so happy to hear him report that it's, that's moving forward, because I think it'll, it'll, it'll really help our, our safety issues on the boardwalk. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's every day during the summer. It's the 100 days yep. that's just constant, a constant problem. It's one of those things where why didn't we think of that before? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, and. Well, there's, it's not easy to move. Yeah. One, right. you got to find a spot. Two, you have to move the lines to get there. Right. So it's not just, oh, we're going to pick this pole up and move it here. Right. 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 I understand. Yeah. You have to find a space for it. You've got to, you know, yeah. now you it's going to be in front of someone's house. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Then yeah. Be there's, there's, there's not, it's just not, let's move it there. Right. It's, there's a lot of things to, that come into play. So, yeah. yeah. It's when Chief get done. Yeah, it's great. When Chief Piaggi told me that he was working with Ed on it, I said, is, this is that really doable? Can the city of 40 said it shouldn't be that, that expensive to do? We'll, we'll work it through. And I just thought that was a great idea. So I'm happy that it's, it's getting, it's moving positively along. I think it'll be really a, a positive from a from a safety perspective. Absolutely. So, Thank uh, you. I just wanted to put my farmer's market hat on for one short story. Donna's still, Donna's still here. It's partially about Donna. A um, few weeks back, I did my annual trek over to the rectory for Holy Trinity Parish uh, in Margate to work through approvals on for both parties that we could have a farmer's market here at the St. James parking lot. And this is our fourth year, so it's, I thought it was a pretty normal routine to do it. And when I went over there and met with the parties at B, um, I found out that there was a, a minor issue. And the issue isn't is not important. Um, and 
we agreed we would uh, discuss it more and maybe have a, a meeting between myself, my wife, and Maria Gatta with the, with the uh, parish to see if we could resolve this issue. And um, later that afternoon, I got a phone call from Donna. And she already knew about the issue. And Donna has her hands in little tentacles everywhere. And so she already knew about this issue and she arranged for a meeting with Penny and I here in her office the following week to, to, so she could learn more about the market and what the issue, how we could resolve the issues. And she then indicated to me that her and Chief Biagi were gonna be having a meeting with the parish about a number of issues and that they would try to uh, talk about the farmer's market as well. And the next thing I knew, the next week, I got an email from the parish uh, that everything was resolved and it was done. And the farmer's market is not a part of the city, as, as most of you know. Donna and Chief Biagi, they didn't have to do anything. They could have just left it to us, and we would have probably resolved it. But they, they just took ownership of it and said, we can help. And that's what they did. And they, the issue is resolved, and we have our contract, and we're all set for next year. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Donna, who happened, happened to be here, and Chief Biagi. That just, Thank you. It was just above and beyond. Great to hear. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you, you Donna. Much. Thank Thanks, you, Donna. Donna. Kudos. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Just come up to the mic and state your name and your address. My name is Paul Stonerod. <clears throat> I'm a consultant. I represent uh, Solomon Builders, which is part owners of Rotella Corporation, which are the owners of the property the Dollar General is sitting on. I was asked to come here tonight by them to find out what the redevelopment proposal is going to be for the adjacent property, which the Acme is sitting on. I don't want to take up the time here. I just want to know if there's some place that I can go to get any specifics of what that proposal or what that... Uh, sure, we can, it's been adopted, so we can send it out to you. It, it's almost identical to the one for Dower General. Okay, I, I, I'm working blind. You know, they're okay, up in Teaneck, New Jersey. Yep. Um, so we can, if you leave your email or a card. I'll with, give you a card. That'd with, be with Val there, and we'll, I'll have somebody send it. Jim Rattel, our consultant on it, we'll, we'll send it out to you. That's great. Uh, you know, they want to participate. Yep. Uh, and th But they don't know what the general uh, uh, requirements or what has been proposed so far. Great. Well, right? So hang on a second. They don't know what the proposal is for their own property? No, no, no. Not their property. Okay. The, the adjacent okay. property. We can, we'll send it along. Okay, great. Public Thank you very much. Now, so. Right. It's been public record all along, but yeah. Right. You'll... Thank you. Thanks for coming Thanks. out. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Okay. Um, did you give your flyers out? Great. Yeah, go ahead. A minute, Shell. It's a long day. <laughs> Anybody check on Maria? I, she just yeah, texted me. She's Here. Okay. She's okay. Hi, I'm Shelly Durazio, 5000 Boardwalk. I'm part of the um, Fentner Twilight Holiday Parade Committee. I passed out flyers. Our event is Saturday, December 7th at 5 o'clock. We have a long list of participants this year. We have string bands from Atlantic, no, marching bands from Atlantic City, Oak Crest High School, Mainland High School, Ocean City High School, Egg Harbor Township. We have um, Jersey Devil ba uh, bagpipers coming. We have mummers coming. Uh, we have horse and buck, complimentary horse and buggy rides for the children, uh, complimentary pony rides for the children, interactive activities for the children, all complimentary. Uh, let's see, we have balloon and face painting. We have an Elvis tribute artist coming. Of course, thank Imagine you, thank that. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to be a great, a great, great did parade. I, did um, I hear we, on motorcycles? Mo we do have some people on motorcycles. We have, uh, I believe, some fire engines coming. We have some car, fabulous cars coming. It's going to be a great event. We just need cooperation from Mother Nature. That's all we need this year. If anybody's looking to do sponsorship, we would love to have somebody sponsor any, any one of these participants. Um, it's going to be, because it's Pearl Harbor Day, like the mayor mentioned, we're honoring all our branches of military. And uh, we just would like to pass the word pass out the flyer and we just we need spectators now we need a lot of people on the streets to participate and um, we have a nice list of volunteers also so we're, we're good to go 
Awesome. Great. This Thank great, you, great. Thank, Thank you for everything you, Shelley, you for everything you do. It's great. Yeah. You, start, you start planning as soon as the parade's <laughs> over, the next day you're planning for the next year. You work all year. Thank you. She said I'm doing it next year. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks, Shelly. Thank you very much. Did you get all that, Nanette? I know. Aren't you excited? I know. Yes. I love marching bands. I love it. Okay. Anyone else from the public like to speak? No? Okay. We don't have an executive session. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? We had to close the public first, don't we? Yeah. No. Oh, yes, we do. I'm sorry. Motion to close public. Do I have a second to close public? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn. Thank you. I did it. I don't throw those